And today I'm with Lee and Charlie Davies. Hello. <laughs> Lee seems to be really well known in the UK caravan industry. I'm a, a brand ambassador for uh, Bailey of Bristol, which is Bailey UK. Um, but not only that, I mean, we've done lots of extraordinary things in our caravan. So um, anything from finding a 1960s caravan in a hedge, uh, which we restored to, we've just come back from a trip where we've done 10 countries with the kids. If we think of something exciting to do with the caravan, chances are we'll have a good go. So how did you get into caravanning? Uh, by accident, really. Camping's not for me. I did lots of Duke of Edinburgh stuff at school, mm. which is um, 20 mile hikes a day, camping at the end of the day, doing that for about a week. And I thought that, that do you know what, I've had enough of that. But when we went away with the kids, it was, it was I could afford to do it. It was cost effective, the kids loved it. So I thought, how can I go camping, but without camping? So on a whim, bought a caravan and decided what I needed to do, having never towed in my life ever, um, was to have a trip to Dartmoor, which is known for its four seasons in one day, <laughs> but go at the beginning of winter, which is a 200 mile journey, not knowing what I was doing in a badly loaded caravan. Oh no. But, but apart from that, we, we, we sort of love the essence of it. Yeah. So I then thought, well, let's work out how to do it, do it properly, and it's just gone from there. So yeah. if you're thinking, what is the best way to, for my first weekend away, don't do what we did. Book local, five, 10 miles away, so that if, um, if you do forget something, mm. you can pop home and get it. And if it doesn't go to plan, you can go home. <laughs> I mean, even something silly like, um, we've been given two keys for the caravan, mm. why didn't I take two keys? Because no, yeah. I went to the play park with Poppy, my daughter, yeah. Helen went, I don't know, to the shop somewhere, elsewhere. But I had the keys, so she was locked out, it started to rain. I come back to find her very wet, sat on the step. <laughs> out of curiosity, where did you go to learn about caravanning? Uh, for me, it was, a lot of the information came from the caravan club. So in okay. the UK, well, it's the caravan and motorhome club. Now, at the time, it was yeah. the caravan club. Lots of information. If I was to do it again, I would go on one of their towing courses. Mm. Teach you how to manoeuvre, how to load, all of that sort of thing. But in reality, what I did was bought it from a dealer on a whim, never having towed, and, and um, I did lots of motorcycling. Well, I still do quite a bit. And I knew this guy who did motorcycle training courses. And I said, Mike, I've, I've got to pick up a caravan. I don't know what to do. And, but I knew he did HGV lessons. So I measured the, my road and I measured my driveway. Oh, yeah. And he said, if you can get it from the dealer to my, uh, well, the area that he uses for training, which is about three miles. Mm. By the time I got there, he set out my road and my driveway in cones. Ah, oh, nice. So that I could then practice reversing it in at yeah. when I got home. Oh, that's awesome. So yeah, but no, go on, go on a towing course, yeah. proper one, know how to load. Fun thing in New Zealand, we don't have towing courses. <laughs> oh, yeah. find someone like Mike, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, get your yeah. tape measure out yeah. and get him to set up your driveway. Yeah. yeah, you touched base that you're into motorcycles as mm. well. Yeah. How did you get into that? I can still remember, if you said to me, write a, can you write a thousand words on the feeling I got when I let out the clutch on the bike for the first time? It'd be, it, I can remember it like it was yesterday. Yeah. And I was nine and I had an electric bike when I was two, I think. Yeah, I, I think they're in your blood. My dad was always into bikes. Before I uh, wrote for caravan magazines, I wrote for quite a few bike magazines. Oh, I was nice. road testing for various publications. Yeah. So yeah, it's always stayed with me. And even in the old caravan, when we went to France. We bought a BSA. Yeah, I've got a Second World War BSA. <laughs> so we followed our family history in the Second World War, yeah. but we took a Second World War motorbike with us. Uh, but because I tow with the Vito, we can get motorbikes in the back and then we can tow the caravan behind. So, yeah. Charlie, do you think you'll, you'll get a motorcycle one day? I've got one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think I've passed on that gene. Oh, that's awesome. So, yeah. I've got a dirt bike. <laughs> Nice. So you ended up finding, uh, did you mention a second hand caravan in a hedge? Yes. Oh. So so we, we spotted an old caravan and we thought, let's do a bit of homework. Now, eBay's not the place to do your homework. Again, a lesson I've learned <laughs> because in a few days, I then put a bid on this old caravan. Yeah. I thought it looked really cool, really cool. Yeah. And ended up with it. Now I've been in a hedge for 20 years. Yeah. Turns out that's not the ideal environment to keep your caravan. <laughs> yeah. And it, it was, it was just what, everything was, how much mould was in there? Oh, no. it was, I wasn't allowed in there. No, it, it was so bad. Oh, no. it, it was just awful, awful. 
So did you basically have to completely strip it and oh everything back to basics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The whole inside wall board oh, renew yeah. the frame. Yeah, uh, Charlie was on carpentry nice. placing the frame, but no, we we. I had to like do the. Uh, wire brushing all the frame hand. The all the chassis, oh, yeah. Okay. And we didn't think we'd ever get rid of that smell of damn, did we? It, oh. it smells like a new caravan now. Yeah, it still That's smells like a new van. I'm gonna say why we have a solar panel on the roof. What's that for the to power? Mm. Oh yeah, it had the dent in the roof, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, they also had a tree laying on top of the roof. <laughs> so yeah, part part of the hedge was this tree <laughs> that's fallen on the roof. Um, and when I rebuilt all the wood and the panels, it just stretched part of the aluminium. Ugh. And no matter what I did, I couldn't get it just to sit exactly right on this curve. Like so I thought, panel. yeah, flexible solar <laughs> panel sits on there perfectly. Oh no, that's yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah. So for people who haven't heard about these Bailey trucks, mm -hmm. what, what are they? With Bailey, all of the Howard family do use caravans and motorhomes. Um, Simon and Nick run Bailey, Simon and Nick Howard, and their dad still has a caravan on the seasonal pitch now. Yes. So it came about as a conversation, of just, just where can you take a caravan? Um, and somehow we ended up coming up with the idea of going to the Arctic Circle, but not just into the Arctic Circle, 300, 300 kilometers inside the Arctic Circle <laughs> uh, to a winter test track facility where they test uh, cars for, you know, okay. uh, the likes of uh, McLaren and, and Volvo and Saab all test there so right. we thought well that's where we need to go <laughs> uh, part of which was a 10k trip across a frozen part of sea across the Baltic Sea uh, where the ice is only 18 inches thick <laughs> uh, towing a caravan so three and a half tons combined weight <laughs> and and then when we done that the sense of achievement was enormous yeah so, so we, we went there I can remember inside the Arctic Circle in the middle of winter in Finland, in my gym jams, in my pajamas, having to turn the heating down, <laughs> bog standard true heating because oh, yeah. it's too hot. That's perfect. Yeah. Um, so we thought, oh, if, you know, if we go somewhere that's really hot, yeah. uh, really cold, we'll have to go somewhere really hot next time. Yeah. So then, we decided to cross continents, going to Asia from the UK, nice. and we managed to do 21 countries in 21 days. Nice. Uh, so it's just. I think once you've got the caravan, it's mm. it's only your imagination mm. that is the limit to where you want to go. It was well, funnily enough. There you go, <laughs> uh, Bailey to the Bosphorus. I would say that the takeaway moment from that trip has to be when we got lost in the markets of Istanbul. If you're going to get lost anywhere, don't get lost in a city of 21 million people. Um, I mean, long story short, we we had a plan and it was going incredibly well. The photographer, all we wanted was a picture of us on the Galata Bridge. And we spoke to the photographer who was going to find a vantage point so he could use a long lens mm -hmm. and, and take the picture. And anyway, we were early, we were just cruising around, relatively easy roads for Istanbul. And it had a radio message, I'll oh, go around again, I'm not quite ready. Cruised around, yeah, once more, just once more and I'll be ready. And then we took a wrong turn. And the wrong turn was into the market district of Istanbul. <laughs> now, if you can think of a film set like the Istanbul markets, that is exactly how it was. Um, so there were people moving their stalls out of the way. Like off Jumanji when they're running through the stalls. Exactly, it, it, was, <laughs> it was every bit like that. <laughs> there were, remember there was a, a guy in a gun shop out there and he, he, he was, showing this chap a gun out on the side street <laughs> okay. and we were we had to turn a sharp left oh, and, and he, he was watching us on his canopy but the people were so friendly <laughs> um it took us five hours to do three kilometers <laughs> uh, and i mean you can barely see chinks of light down the side of the caravans <laughs> were, you, were you worried you're going to get to a part where you just couldn't fit well, we can, we can, yeah, we went on Google Maps trying to work out where, where the road would bring us out, but we just couldn't tell. Yeah. <laughs> because wherever we went didn't correspond to anything we could possibly find out. So, <laughs> and we couldn't go backwards because it, it sort of, the, the market just sort of envelops around you. <laughs> so you go forward and there's market stalls and people behind you and push bikes and cars. and Yeah, chaos. So, you, yeah, we had no option but to go forward. And um, hope. And hope. <laughs> yeah. 
And did you get the shot on the bridge in the end? Yes. <laughs> nice. Yes. Five hours later. <laughs> it, it was meant to be. Uh, and, and it, <laughs> you are in shot doing, doing the stretching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it was meant to be an easy day yeah. to, to get down into Istanbul. We thought, you know, what, come back, nice early finish. Lovely. <laughs> uh, it was dark when we got back. Uh, they got the shot. Uh, and we always come back to a, a hero's welcome. <laughs> but the thing I took away from that is that if we're going on a trip to the New Forest, down to the beach. Don't take off. Don't take a wrong turn, but if you do, it's a piece of cake compared to that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, build on confidence from that.